at 30 points. I'm open for questions and answers. It's not a great idea to take a break, but let's quickly run through if there are any questions by far. I have a question. Um, in terms of timing, how, if we're in the grants management space specifically, how would I best identify the right timing? Because I feel, obviously me personally, I feel like there's always, it's always the right time. So how would I identify that? I think right now it really depends that how many grants are being wasted just to begin with and yeah. grants as you know are driven by taxation policies correct me if i'm wrong yeah, correct okay. okay so the moment you have inflation and you have a regime change more yeah. and more grants will be coming right before that yeah. because a the previous guys have to make sure they win the next elections and the second thing is they want to show impact. So that mm -hmm. is your timing. So understand your four election cycles, just to begin. Got it. Yep, perfect, thank you. Welcome. And another thing you need to understand is the war zones globally. There are certain areas where there is there are wildfires at a certain time of an year in Australia, in US, and there are floods in certain parts of the world every year during that season. Like in Pakistan, every year there's a flood in June or July. That is a time for deployment of grants. Best time to hold on to these guys. Every Ramadan, you know, the, 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 the month for Muslims when they fast, you know, so every Ramadan, the largest donations are collected across the world. There is no bigger event than Ramadan where donations are collected. So if you really want to hit it hard, just hit the Muslim community in Ramadan. It's huge, huge. Okay, who wants to go ahead? McGenna, you got a neck ache or a shoulder ache? I'm still learning as I grow where to place my hands. So I'm like, do I place it here? Do I place it here? I'm just like testing and getting to know myself on a daily basis. That's good to hear because at least there are two six months babies here, me and McGenna. <laughs> I said that earlier as well that you know amna has to take care of more babies so okay arturo megana dr sheila you've been quiet for a while arturo has been quiet for a while guys yeah, please yeah, yeah. shoot yeah i have yes there is a relationship between simplicity multiple moving parts and money streams and we if we have uh we will pretend or we work to have multiple moving streams sorry, multiple money streams, obviously we'll be incrementing the moving parts of the business. So I think that we will have an issue. Uh, we need to have balance on the, between those points because even with multiple uh, money streams will become um, uh, less simple, the, the business. So I think it was... You are absolutely right you have a mathematician's mind. This is why we said only have two or three monetization streams and that's all. And this is why you will keep less moving parts also. The more Pandora box you open of things, the more moving parts, more monetization streams, the bigger the mess. The bigger the mess, yes. Okay. Mark Zuckerberg did one thing, Facebook. Have you seen Meta as a real estate developer? Have you seen them in hospitality? Do they have hotels? Are they in any other business? No. His personal money is parked in many businesses, many different asset classes. I know it for a fact. But does he do any business actively? No. 
it's all parking the money so i always suggest business owners park the money the money that you have parked is safe it's just like you have 10 cars me myself i'll be honest i have about seven of those i use only one six are parked i only use them sometimes why the, if i use all seven my maintenance cost this cost that cost risk is huge i use a regular car every day sit on the back seat yalla let's do business let's work you know all the nicer ones just park there those are assets so Pick up one business, become famous for that. And Arturo, I think this is exactly where you're stuck. You have four or five solutions. And I think the only thing you really need to pick up is one solution, which literally fits closest into these 50 points that I'm explaining today. Yes. And those who are running the current businesses, please find out which of these are not check marked yet. Because if they're not check marked today, tomorrow, they're going to appear like a disease. Yeah, yeah. there is an important part here, even uh, checking the checking mark all those points, because sometimes, for example, timing, we even we don't know if the timing is right. Only we know, for example, before the pandemic, I was working in a uh, delivery app, app. Yeah, but I uh, do not working that months before i started to work in another app uh, related to properties uh in the 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 desk front desk for the properties and i forget about that particular project delivery the timing was perfect it was if i was working on that application then the pandemic hits and they could boom i was in the perfect time but i didn't know i didn't know as anybody else uh, so that is an important thing about others points in the list too. We need to be aware of the importance on where will be best applicable our business to that point in particular. I'll give you an example. It's a little below the belt. We have men and women and everybody's adults. You know the problem with men? This is when a man has a problem. When the timing is not right and when they come too fast. When you do it quickly. And the problem with women is that they come too late because they overthink and they're usually late in business. But if you have to really get a baby out and a nice business done, both of your timings have to be correct 100%. So you as a business owner, as an entrepreneur and your customer, your market, the market has to be ready for your product. When Orkut was launched, the market was not ready. The only difference between the success factor of Facebook versus Orkut is Facebook only got the bloody timing right. That is it. He copy pasted Orkut as it is. Whatever story he tells, oh, I did it in the college and I made this for friends and blah, blah, blah. That's a brand story, right? <clears throat> the true story is he just got the timing right. Fast food chains is not a new concept, but fast food chains grow immensely because they got the timing right when there was a cultural change in America for fast paced businesses and people didn't have time. Okay, so timing is important. Men are usually hasty, always hasty. Get it done, get it out, get it. And this is why they, there's a problem. This is why they come before. Women, they're overthinking and overcalculating generally about the business, about what to do, how to do process. And they're thinking like 20 steps ahead, which they don't even have to think today, right? And what happens, they miss out on the timing. Some women are very sharp and they take it on the right time. And I call them mentally, physically, and entrepreneurially healthy women. And similarly, there are men who are wise, 
and they take their time and they're smart people and they just wait and sit and they're patient, you know, and they just get it on the right timing. So timing there, you know, timing is something on which the entire balance of the universe is built. You just get the timing wrong of the orbit of one little asteroid, the entire universe will collapse. Right? Let's say Michelle the best artworks that Michelle would ever produce, the most beautiful paintings. Either she will create those paintings when she is really sad and sorrowful and really tired and heartbroken, or she will produce the best paintings when she's super excited, super happy, and she is going through a consistent three days of happiness. She will paint. But if she missed that timing when she is depressed or when she's super excited, if she misses that timing, anything that she creates in between those is average work. I can guarantee it for any artist in the world. The best content, the best business ideas, the whole world will tell you, um, hang on, um, Amna? Yes. Amna, it's uh, Fatima's therapy. Yeah, yeah the, thank you. It's already in therapy. I was there. You want to take the therapy? So you could always go ahead, no problem. Okay. All right, thank you for being here. That's a woman of commitment. Her child has a therapy for autism. She's right here with us. And this is really what it takes to, you know, do. So are we ready? Should we continue? Everybody's active? Okay. So then we go to the value proposition. Be it any relationship in our life or be it business, you have to add value. Without adding value into each other's life, without adding value to your customer, and without adding value to your employees, without adding value to your suppliers, you cannot run a business because you're literally in the middle of it. You know, so value chain, understanding of the value chain is important. The second most important thing in value chain is what are those areas where you can add more value and receive more profits? So we call that backward integration, upward integration, forward integration, you know, horizontal and vertical integration of business. So try to figure out that how many brokers or commission agents can you cut? The more commission agents that you cut, the better it is, the more value you can provide. So I always push it on one thing, sourcing, sourcing, and sourcing. Go to the source always hit the source you know the next thing is your brand mix and brand mix i won't elaborate here but brand mix is very important sometimes for example macbook macbook guys know that They're large, I don't know, 17, 18 inch screens. Amna knows better. She's into tech. But let's say their big screens do not sell very well in laptops. But the problem is that they have to create it because their competition is creating it and there's a very small segment which actually buys it, right? They cannot remove it from the brand mix because the moment they will remove it, all the people are gonna not talk about the good part that they've done or the new machine that they have launched, they're going to say, oh, Apple guys removed this machine, even if they were not a user. Okay. So sometimes you create a brand mix where you're incurring a loss on something, but you keep incurring it because you don't want to lose the rest of them and also for your brand reputation. So understanding of a brand mix is very important. Sometimes we're putting money from our own pocket to do certain things 
but that is important because you have to create a brand mix not to lose out on certain customers because a customer might just leave that one thing and because of that one thing he will lose he will not engage with you with other 10 things that's giving you money okay then we go to the share of wallet this is extremely important dr sheila says i'm a coach i will provide a 29 dollars monthly subscription for my coaching classes okay everything looks very good she comes and says shapat it's only 29 dollars anybody can pay it it's it's equivalent to getting a meal from mcdonald's or a starbucks coffee with a pastry right it's very good pricing, penetration pricing. I'm offering so much value, blah, 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 blah. My only question to Dr. Sheila would be, your target customer, let's say Megena, or let's say Amna, do you know how many subscriptions they've signed up for already? 20% of their credit card payments are going into just random subscriptions every month. It's not the $29 that you're offering. It is the share of wallet. How much share of wallet are you trying to grab out of her subscriptions budget? People's subscription budgets are already full, literally full to the teeth. Nobody is ready to even sign up a $2 subscription right now, which is $12, $24 per year. Nobody wants a random subscription. You already have utility bills and insurances and tax and God knows what to pay, right? So the share of wallet is important. We need to understand what does your consumer or customer budgets for? If your customer has never, like for example, if Rudo, and I understand Rudo is based out of Houston, you know, he's a hardcore businessman. He's a maths guy, he's a numbers person. He doesn't give a shit about one, two, three. All he cares about is, this is my cost, this is my profit, make sure it's delivered, it's hardcore business. I can guarantee, and Rudo, correct me if I'm wrong, but Rudo has never ever budgeted for a consulting firm or a consultant to consult their business. I can guarantee it. There is no budget which says we're going to pay $120,000 to a business consultancy firm to help us with our business. I can guarantee it. Am I right, sir? You're mute. I started with that last year. Yeah, just last year because now you're in the growth pattern, but it's still a budget, right? Now let's say the budget is $100,000, okay? And Rudo says, Shafat, I wanna engage you and your company because I love what you guys have done. Come on and take it. I come in and it's, I come with an item. Oh, okay, Rudo, I want to take $80,000 for this, this, this. And Rudo says, what about the rest of it? I'm like, well, you got to take care. And it doesn't fit Rudo's wallet. Will I ever be able to get business from Rudo? No. Impossible. And let's say Rudo engages with me with $100,000, he's left $20,000. Now he needs a financial consultancy firm to help them with the finances and you know, they say $50,000, Rudo is off $30,000 already. Now, do you think that you can open a business consulting firm today and say, I'm gonna have clients like Rudo to invest with me? No, his share of wallet is gone. He's already over the brim. So is true with grants, fin financial management stuff. Once there's a company who has already got a CFO, who has already got lawyers on retainer, who has already got finance manager and accountants working for them. When, when, you know, when um, Alicia goes to them and tells them, I'm going to take this, this, this engagement fee just to begin with, these guys are like, oh, we don't have the budget for that. There is no share of wallet for engagement fee. But there surely is a share of wallet when she says, I'm going to take 20% of whatever you receive. They're okay with that. Okay. So share of heart, that is the next thing. Share of heart is the strongest, strongest point that can build a brand. 
We're going to do a quick exercise here. Let's everybody unmute. I'm going to ask each one of you a question and just give me a name of the brand. Okay. We'll start with Michelle. Michelle, tell me the name of the perfume that you would love to keep all the time with you. The first one that comes in your mind. Um, <clears throat> okay. What is the name of the perfume that you would love to buy, which you love the most, but it's hard to get. Um, from anthropology, and they only offer it once a year. Got it. So the second brand is the one for which she has the share of heart. And the first one is what has got the share of mind. Share of heart is her desire. And share of mind is the first one that she thinks of. We're going to go to Megena. Megena, what's the first place that you think of when you think of a great restaurant? Mm. <laughs> um, I forgot the name of it, but <laughs> it's the best. It's the best restaurant in the world. And the chef is Albanian. And somewhere in, I think, Switzerland, or, and that's the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. It's, that's it's the share place of heart. heart. It's the heart, yeah. <laughs> heart. Tell me the share of mind. If you're hungry right now, you know, grab a smash burger. Where would you go right away? Oh, I would go at the restaurant I used to work at Milos in New York City. Plus, right? So that's the difference between a share of heart and share of mind. <laughs> Rudolf approves. Yeah. It's, so it's I'm best going to Dr. Sheila now. Dr. Sheila, you're the book that you love and you love to read it again and again. Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich. Okay. And what is the what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word love? Money. Money. Okay, I love that. <laughs> I've never heard that before. I'm writing it down. <laughs> okay. Close. She's too close. No, 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 close no, 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 no. GC. Th these are the after effects of the book. You know, this is the true. book she's reading, all right? Think and Grow Rich. <laughs> okay, all right. You know, a few years later, she'll have a better name to share with us. Uh, so that's literally the share of heart and share of mind. Until and unless you do not create a share of heart, if Rudo is not a welcoming man, not hospitable, etc etc and people do not aspire to work with him and his firm he will never get the share of wallet and until and unless he does not get a lot of share of wallet he would never be able to get the share of mind so share of heart share of wallet and share of mind okay why Big brands, cola, the first thing that comes in your head is Coca-Cola or Pepsi. Why? Because they have sold so much and they have a share of wallet all over the world. You have to sell. Sell, sell, sell. You have to grab share of wallets and then you achieve the global brand awareness or the share of might but in order to sell you need to have the share of heart and make sure that you are a brand which is desired with this let's move on okay 
magic ball and go to market there's a complete session on it ladies and gentlemen so just hang tight for tomorrow as i take you through brand marketing team oh, oh. okay habibi quickly just note this down very fast because this is very important i won't be touching upon it again each one of you please write down five names of your core team they could be your employees or they cannot be your employees but five names of your core team the core core team on which your entire business depends it could be a friend um, Arturo or Dr. Sheila if you don't have employees it could be a friend it could be a partner it could be a support system just put those five core people Michelle your core 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 team five people quickly Are we done? Okay, who is done? I am. Okay, Megana. Um, the first person that comes to mind when I think of my team, it's uh I have I'm being a little selfish here with adding more to it, but it's my mother slash my family. Mm -hmm. Uh the second one it's myself. I am my team because I hire myself on a daily basis, my friends, my strategic partners, and of course my phone, my computer. Those are my teams. Very interesting. Who else is done? The, the, the team is very important. Uh, that's the reason, one of the reasons that I was uh, in a job last time, because uh, I find very good people there. Uh, okay, first, uh, two friends on from the university, Alex Tobar and Rafael Patrine, and three mates in, in the current company. Three names, Mario, Charlie, Abdon. There are good developers. There are good. So we have here uh, a management people and uh, yeah, three developers. Three developers. Yeah. Who else? I know. That, that, that's it. I can go. Who else is ready? I can go. Um, for Chris Adassi, if we're using that part of what I do outside of art, we've got C, Eric, Brad, and then we have a wider circle of leaders, but Shafat, you and Amna, Amna as um, with starting to work with you guys within the past month to become part of that five for me. All right. Brilliant. Alicia? Mr. Um, I have my, my uh, fiance. I have a business advisor who's also my ex. <laughs> um, and I have key employees who basically helped me run the business and then my referral partners. Very good. Mr. Rudo. Okay, first of all, my wife, with whom I wake up every morning at five o'clock in the morning and she helps me stay fit and healthy while doing workouts in the morning with a, with a trainer that we have. 
That's mm-hmm. the most important part. Then I have uh, Giovanni, who is my commercial manager and also acts as a uh, general manager for my whole company in Mexico. Then Olga, my 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 general accountant. Mm-hmm. Reina, my my operations, no, my projects manager. Okay. She oversees the the overweight and over uh dimensional industrial project department and then at alberto one of my branch managers and alan uh, another branch manager high producers got it who is the closest to you at a personal level my wife number two i think my commercial manager your commercial manager. 